team, you need to be informed and make smart decisions to build a champ no different when buying or selling a car, new or used. Go to TrueCar.com. Their certified dealer network can save three grand off MSRP. Uh, let's go to Chris Broussard in New York via the Coward Global Satellite Network. Let's, let's start with Zion Williamson. Uh, my takeaway is, much like Bryce Harper, Bryce Harper was too big for college baseball. Bryce Harper was too big to hang out in the minors. He was hitting 500-foot home runs in high school. We do this with p politicians, uh, prodigies in tech. Zion Williamson now is too big. He's Shaq in Orlando. He's too big. Let's get into the pros. You know, he gave us 25, 30 games. I don't think it's the end of humanity, the NCAA or Nike, or college basketball or Duke. It's the beginning of basketball commerce. To me, it's over in college. Let's go to the NBA. Your takeaway, Chris. Well, look, remember Ben Simmons for different reasons, but Ben Simmons wasn't in the NCAA tournament, and the tournament went on, and Ben went on. It was the number one pick. Nobody held it against him. I've texted with some NBA guys today, and uh, I kind of got three different answers uh, when I asked if Zion should shut it down. Uh, one said he should. Another said he really wants to see him compete to, you know, fight through this and show the competitor in him. And the other said, no, ballers ball. Oh, <laughs> come on. So, uh, but, but I asked all of them, too, okay, would shutting it down hurt his trade stock? And every single one of them, no. He's still going number one. Right. And it's not even close. So I'm with you. My feeling, Colin, is that if he is, if this is remotely serious, like even if, you know, if doctors say you can play through it, Look, you're going to have some pain. You're not going to get up quite as high as normally, but you will eventually. It'll come back to you, but your movements won't be the same for a few weeks through the tournament. I would shut it down. I'm only playing if I'm him, if I'm completely 100%. I feel no pain. I feel no differently than I did two days ago. Otherwise, you should shut it down. I would also get a second opinion. After Duke doctors do whatever they do, I would go get a second opinion. And look, Colin, if, if Zion came out tonight, even before we know how severe this injury is, if he and his parents come out tonight and say, look, we talked about it as a family, Zion's goal and dream for his whole life has been to make it to the NBA. Therefore, after this injury the other night, we're going to sit out and prepare for the NBA draft. I would have absolutely no problem with him doing that. Yeah, you and I agree. So I've pushed back on this Kevin Durant leaving the Warriors thing, but I do trust agents because that's always where all these stories begin. Uh, they're, they're problem solvers. And Sam Amick, you know him, was on our show yesterday and said, Durant's people are talking about New York. That's why there's all these stories. Before yesterday, I was like 20% chance. I got to tell you. When Sam said that, Chris, I kind of feel like it feels 70-30, Durant's leaving after the season in New York. Where, where do you sit on this today? It feels a lot like LeBron going to the Lakers. Yes. So, you know, everybody yeah. was talking about it. It was the worst-kept secret in the league. I said I think the best thing for Kevin Durant's legacy is that he, if, assuming they win it this year, he stays one more year, opens up the new arena in San Francisco, and goes for a fourth straight championship, Colin. Yeah. All the guys he's compared to and really below, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Tim Duncan, Kobe Bryant, so on and so forth, Magic, Kareem, they never won four straight. Nobody since Bill Russell has won four straight. That would be, I think, it'd be great for Durant's legacy. Then you could go to New York and try to win it elsewhere. Now, maybe it doesn't work out timing-wise. Maybe Kyrie stays in Boston long-term if you don't go this year. So it, maybe it's not realistic, but I like KD in New York, not by himself, but I love KD and Kyrie in New York. Colin, I think that would be the best thing for the NBA. Golden State would remain a contender, but they wouldn't be light years ahead of everybody else. Yeah. Houston would be good. Oklahoma City would be good. The Lakers would be good. With or without Anthony Davis, but let's say they get him. Boston's still good. Milwaukee's still good. If Kawhi goes to the Clippers, they're good now. I mean, it, it could be great for the NBA because New York would then be good. You would have six, seven teams 
really kind of on the same level, and it would be outstanding, especially after these, what, five years of dominance by Golden State. Are you bothered at all? I'm not, but some may be. LeBron mostly admitted yesterday, okay, now i got to play hard. But he said, listen, I'm doing this sooner than I want, but I had an injury. We're not in the playoffs. I can't tell you the last time I missed the playoffs. LeBron acknowledged, completely honest here, that, okay, I, I got to start playing hard. How did that land for you? It was fine. Look, he, this guy, since 2007, since he first got to the finals with Cleveland, he has been championship or bust. And that's it. It's all been all about that. And now he knows what it takes to win titles. He's played 60 more playoff games than Michael Jordan did. He's played 110 more regular season games than Michael Jordan did. So if he has to coast a bit during the regular season, fine. He coasted for four regular seasons in Cleveland. You know, they never won more than, what, 57 games last year to the fourth seed. That's fine. Just get to the playoffs and then turn it on. Now, it's a little tougher in the West, and he's finding that out. But I, I'm like you, Colin. I liked what he said. I do think he can turn it on and get this team revved up. I also think this, Colin. I think the Lakers had, were playing a few mind games with LeBron. Remember a few days ago, we get this story that the Lakers are concerned about LeBron's groin, and he's not as intense as usual, and he's not engaged, all that. That was a leak. I think it was a purposely planted leak because I've talked to people close to LeBron. They said, look, yeah, of course he comes out of, you know, the injury, and he's kind of pacing himself, feeling the injury out, wants to make sure he doesn't re-injure himself, and he's trying to get back in the game shape. But the groin, I'm being led to believe, is not an issue. And so where did the Lakers, where does this concern come from? I think they put it out there hoping for just what they got, that LeBron would be tired of this. Everybody's questioning me. Can I make the playoffs? The West is different. Am I still the best player in the league? I've messed up the minds of these young kids. And now the Lakers don't think I'm intense enough. They're worried about my groin when I feel like I'm fine. They must not think I'm playing well. So I think he's responding a bit to that, and I like it. Uh, finally, Odell Beckham lashed out yesterday at somebody that said uh, he's selfish. Kyrie Irving lashed out yesterday about, uh, you know, he and Durant in the hallway. And I really do see them as very similar. These are gifted athletes that I'd love to have on my team, but I wouldn't build around them. They've both been hurt a couple of times. And I think their talents, not necessarily great leaders. Uh, Joy and I talked about this. If you're a superstar in this league, you're part of the league's soap opera. I, when I watch Kyrie Irving pushing back on all these rumors about him, I think to myself, I, I can't build around you. I'd love to have you on the roster. But it makes me think he really can't handle being the face of a franchise. What say you? It's interesting. I mean, look, and I heard Joy say it earlier, I, as a human being, these guys are human beings, I get the frustration. You know, you're in the hallway talking with one of your good friends and everybody's dying. They could have been talking about who knows what. They could have been talking about music, about politics, about women. It could have been anything. And we don't know, but everybody's speculating what it means, psychoanalyzing these guys. So I get it, okay? But you have to understand that comes with the territory. If you don't want public scrutiny, don't have a job in the public eye. It's as simple as that. You can go get a normal job like everybody else, and then you can have all the conversations in the hallways with your best friends that you want, and <laughs> nobody will care. And guess what? You also won't have a movie called Uncle Drew. <laughs> you also won't have your own sneaker. You also won't make millions of dollars. You also probably won't have all these beautiful women. So, look, I get, he said the job isn't fun. Well, there's plenty of fun to being an NBA superstar, and everybody has something about their job that isn't fun. And many people, if not most, their entire jobs aren't fun. So just relax, enjoy it. If you have to 
like shut down social media, if you have to not read the papers or whatever, then do it if, it, if that's what makes you happy. But this is part of the job you signed up for. And Kyrie does have to realize that. Last thing, when he apologized to LeBron, he also, and I'm serious, he also should have talked to LeBron, and maybe he did, about how to handle the media. Because you can say what you want about LeBron, and he's had a couple missteps himself. But every year, first in Cleveland when he first left, then Miami his last year there, then in Cleveland again his last year, there was speculation all year. LeBron never let it get to him. He never let it ruin that team season that year. And he was somehow he was able to just really handle it well. And I think Kyrie could learn from that. Kyrie doesn't – He's. it's fine for him to change his mind and go from – I'm here if you want me, Boston, to ask me July 1st. I don't know owe anybody anything. That's fine for him to change his mind like that. But he, he has to understand what comes with that. And now we're all wondering. So, yeah, we're going to scrutinize everything. Good seeing you, buddy. First things first this week. He's co-hosting Chris Broussard. Love having you on, bud. Thanks, man. Yep, Daryl Morey's coming up in about an hour and a half. Odell Beckham, speaking of him, uh, Doug Gottlieb said something about him on TV, and Odell Beckham fired back at Doug, and I'll respond to both next in L.A. It's the Herd.